Hello everybody, welcome back. Thank you for joining me for another video. Now this one is the one a lot of you have been asking for and that is for me to do an updated um, video on the bloom technique. Now ever since I got my hands on this liquid gold, because really that's what it is, liquid gold, I have been practicing and trying out some stuff failing, then getting a few good results and failing. So this is going to be a long video. There's going to be a lot of edits to it, a little cut in here, cut out there, all that. So bear with me. But I wanted to start off by telling you or showing you. Now, if you have seen my video 131, that was the original Bloom video I did way back in the day, a year and a half ago, if not longer. Um, and I have... You know, you could still use that video and still use the products, but I have found a much better way to do it and, and it's just so much easier. So in that old video, you do know, I'm gonna reach over here, that you needed your bare deep base stuff, you needed um, for the actual cell activator, you needed like the wood conditioner, you needed PVA glue, you needed like the white glue, which I don't have here. Um, you needed the ink, you needed Minwax, the polycrylic, you needed all of this stuff just to do a bloom, okay? And let me tell you, it was a pain in the butt. Um, it was just, it's a lot of ingredients, a lot of product. And, you know, just because you have the products and you mix it according to, let's say what I say, doesn't mean you're still gonna get the results you're looking for. It's not an easy technique to do. So, when I got my hands on this Floetrol, I tried the same, all those ingredients I just showed you with Australian Floetrol. Now, again, you'll have to watch the video if you wanna know all those ingredients. However, I'll show you some of the practice tiles I did. So this was using the bare, you know, and I had, oh, I also bought, at the time, Joe Sonia varnish. So the Joe Sonia with the bare was your, your pouring medium, blah, 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 blah. None of that, okay? You don't need any of that. So I had practiced using all of that stuff and you could see, I don't know if you can see, but it left creases or crevices in the tile when it dried. So, you know, and I know a lot of people have had that issue. Um, when the paint dries, there was like creases and crevices in here. However, when you put the resin on top, that all disappeared and it looked beautiful anyway, but it still wasn't right. So these were my practice tiles. Now again, they didn't all dry properly. So this one, when I did it, it looked gorgeous. And then the next day when I came to check on it, it looked like this. So totally distorted, totally lost its shape, totally lost all the cells. Same with this one, just no good. And that was using the Bear, the Josonia, all of that. So I decided, you know what? This is not working for me. So I just wasn't happy. And I'm like, there's got to be something else. There's got to be another way. I'm like, you know what? One day I thought to myself, well, what if I were to do the Floetrol with my Amsterdam Titanium White? That's my cell activator. Just those. No Minwax, no wood conditioner, none of that. Just these two. And then for the actual paints, I thought... Why don't I just use my Dutch pour paint? Why not give that a try? I thought, you know what? It's got Floetrol in it. It's got water in it. It's got American Floetrol. It's got water. You all know my Dutch pour recipe for all my Dutch pour paints. These are all my Dutch pour squeeze bottles. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to try it with my Dutch pour paint. And lo and behold, this is what I got. I could not believe that something so simple would work so well. So these are my tester tiles, which I recently just um, put a coat of crystal resin on them. But look, they didn't distort, they didn't do, like they, they stayed the way they, I had the, the blah, blah. they stayed 
the way they were when they were wet. Now, I did do a few round pieces just the other day. So here, I'll show you one. These don't have resin on them yet. But look how awesome that is. Now, they don't all turn out perfect. They don't. It's, it's really hit or miss, but I've been like 95% successful with this. Um, so, and these are done, here's another one, on my round coasters. I'll show you those in a minute. And then I have the tile coasters, the ceramic tiles. So, okay, I'm gonna put these away so I don't ruin them because some of them are for a client. So these were testers and they were completely dirty on the back with paint, but it doesn't matter because I did tape them after so that I can do the resin because you don't want those resin drips stuck to the tile. So I did tape them, I did resin them, and then peel the tape off and then I put the backing on and they're good to go. So there you go, easy peasy. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with what they call the pillow paint, okay? Now, the pillow paint I was using before, for those of you in Canada, was the Canadian Tire brand. I was using this. Easy Flow, medium base, eggshell paint, okay? So I found though that it wasn't drying right, and then I, you know, over the time, a year and a half now, a lot of other Canadians, a lot of other, you know, Americans, all of you guys who have been trying this technique have come up with better paint brands for the base. So I had a lot of Canadians tell me that a lot of people have been using Glidden. So I went out to Home Depot and I went and I bought Glidden. Now I didn't know which one to buy, eggshell or the satin. So everyone uses something different. Everyone swears that satin's the way to go. Other people swear that eggshell's the better kind. So I said, you know what? I'm gonna buy both. And I've been using both and both have been working perfectly fine. So I am using eggshell white base by Glidden, okay? This is all in Canada, but I know you guys have Glidden in the US. And then this one is, you can't see it cause it's all dirty, but satin white base glidden okay so these are my pillow paints all right i will open those up now you don't put anything in it you just buy it off the shelf if they tell you you have to mix color or anything into it tell them to take a hike you don't want it you're just going to buy it off the shelf as is don't shake it do not make them sh let them shake it because then you're going to get a gajillion air bubbles in it and you don't want that okay so just buy it off the shelf and off you go go home Okay, next thing, that's your pillow paint. The colors that you're gonna lay down on your tiles or your coasters are for my, my Dutch pour paints. So I've got all kinds of colors. I've brought them up here on the table and I'm gonna use my Dutch pour paints and we'll do that. Now, cell activator, Australian Floetrol with Amsterdam Titanium White. This stuff is gold, okay? I was not getting the results I'm getting now with just regular Floetrol. I know there are people out there who are getting it and I'm so happy for you, but I could not do it. All right, so I got my hands on this thanks to some awesome viewers. I have a ton of it now. But for those of you who want Floetrol, but you can't get it because it's too expensive to ship from Australia, there are places in the US that do sell Floetrol, these actual bottles. And then there's people on Etsy who sell these little bottles um, for you to try. So I have a contact who has an Etsy shop. So she's selling these bottles, they're four ounce bottles. She has now made a different bottle. So this is the new and improved bottle version. But I will link her information in the description below. Okay, and you can save a dollar off every bottle you buy using code Canela10 or if you click on the link in the description below, the code will automatically be applied when you head on over to the Etsy shop. So if you don't wanna spend 50, 60, 70, 80 bucks on a big jug of this, because all you need is like a tablespoon of this, then try this out first and you can get it much cheaper. And then, well, you know, depends where you live, depends on shipping, but this is a great alternative if you want to try Australian Floetrol 
without the super duper duty fees and shipping expenses. All right, moving along. Now you have to shake this super duper well, all right? Very, very well. Now I have here my round coasters. You can buy them off of me. I sell these. They, you can buy them and you can email me at canalaseraco at gmail.com to order them. These are four inch rounds. I have four inch square with rounded edges. And then for those of you who wanna be brave, I have six, no, eight, 10 and 12 inch coast um, rounds. My daughter is going crazy upstairs. Okay, so she just distracted me. So those are all available. If you'd like to purchase to practice on these rounds, you can do so by emailing me. All right, I'm gonna put these away. All right, so I've already taped the back of these because these are my wood, piece, wood ones and I do wanna keep them clean. So I'm gonna show you guys really quick how I tape the back of a coaster. Super duper quick. I have green tape it's from the dollar store. I do not buy expensive 3M, Scotch, whatever brand tape you can find. Nope, just cheap dollar, dollar store tape. All right. Now, a lot of people ask me where I get my tiles from. So for those of you in Canada, here's the tile, ceramic tile, it's got a gloss top to it. Okay, this is the back, all right. Now, I bought them from Rona about a year and a half to two years ago. They were on clearance. So what I'm doing here is I'm just pushing down the tape around the edge to make sure it adheres really well to the coaster, okay? Now I'm gonna cut around it and talk at the same time. So the coasters are from Rona and they were on clearance and you can't find them anymore because they're gone. Home Depot used to sell them. They no longer sell them anymore either. And I literally cleared out the entire store and bought like 10 cases of it. Each case has 150 tiles. So yeah, you do the math. But anywho, I do know Lowe's sells them. However, they do have um, little bumps, little ridges on each side of the tile. Now I know some people are sanding them off or leaving them as is. I don't know, for me, I, I just can't use those. So I'm lucky to have found and bought all those. But again, if you can't find coasters and you wanna buy these wood rounds, again, you can just buy them off of me. They don't need any priming, no prepping, none of that. You don't need to gesso them or anything like that. These are hard board, that's the material, hard board. And they don't warp nothing. So that is the good thing about that. All right, so there you go. That takes care of that, all right? Four coasters. Here we go. I'm trying to do everything and trying to think. This isn't like a regular Dutch pour where I know what I'm doing and I have everything in order and know what I'm like, what comes next. So what we wanna do is we're gonna make cell activator. So again, as I mentioned, shake this like crazy. And it's a three to one ratio. Three parts this, one part that. You could use a tablespoon, a teaspoon, a whole cup full. It depends on how much of it you want to make. So I'm going to use a tablespoon. That's what I'm going to use. I just realized I don't have my mic on, so I'm pretty sure you guys can hear me though. I hope so. All right, so three to one. And this stuff is super duper fluid, like really watery. So we've got one, two, and three. So that's all you need. And it makes quite a bit of cell activator because you don't need that much in the first place when you're doing this technique. You're just putting a little bit on the top, all right? So we'll close this up. And now we need one, and I always screw the cap off. I never squirt from here because it gets gunky and dry paint, and then that dry gunk gets in your, in your, in your stuff. So now we're gonna do one tablespoon, there we go, of paint. There we go. Perfect. That is done, that's it. That is it. I'm gonna clean off this, clean this off. All right. 
ready for the next time I want to use it. So I'm going to give this a good stir. And this is all you need for your cell activator. That is it. Let me see, what else can I think of that I'd like to mention? And I'm gonna be done this video and I'm gonna be like, oh, I forgot to say this or I forgot to say that. All right, so that's pretty stirred up well. So what I have here is my Loli Veffy bottles and I have one of the smaller sizes. This is the smallest size they come in. And I put my little tag on here. It's called the Bloom Cell Activator. So I know that this isn't just white Dutch pour paint. This is for the cell activator. These Pouring out of these bottles is the easiest thing in the world. And it just helps you control how much is going to go on the tile. So I'm going to put this in here. Yes, my bottle is nice and full now. I was running low. All right. Here we go scrape that cup out because you don't want to get rid of any of this gold liquid gold that's what i call it liquid gold all right put the cap back on all right ready cell activator ready so i'm going to start with a tile now i'm going to use both the satin and the eggshell and i need my can opener here so open this up and you'll notice between the two, one has a little bit more of an oilier um, hint to it. This one doesn't, you can't see the oil to it. And it's, I'd say it's thick, but not super thick. Now I thought about trying the pillow paint to be like Artist Loft, just thicker, but I have this stuff already and I figured I would use it. So what I'm gonna do, I gave it a good stir with my stir stick and I'm gonna pour it here in a cup because I hate making a mess. And I'll tell you one thing about this technique, no matter how clean and tidy you are, you will make a mess, I kid you not. All right, it's the messiest technique. As you can see, that's why I put paper down because underneath this, <laughs> You do not want to see what's going on underneath that. Believe me. Um, I like to try and keep this plastic on my table as long as possible. There's no sense in throwing it out and putting a clean one down. All right, I don't want to get my lids mixed. Actually, I do have them written eggshell, so I know what lid goes on what. All right, so this one is the same as you can see. All right, so I'm just gonna give it a quick stir. Now I'll probably do another video down the road. If there's any questions, you guys can, you know, ask in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer, um, you know, and I'll probably do another one of these down the road. We'll see, but I just wanted to do this one really quick for you guys so that you guys you know, have an idea of what I am doing and what has been working for me. All right, so we're gonna do a coaster. Now, you might wanna have a pencil and a paper or something to write down the colors you're using because when you end up with a gorgeous color palette and you don't write this stuff down, you're like, oh, what did I use? I don't remember what color I used or what order I put it in. So, what I did, yesterday when I was playing around and I'll show you all the the coasters I did yesterday after but I just took a piece of paper and I wrote down here satin and eggshell here you go backwards satin and eggshell and then I numbered them all and then I put down what colors I used and in what order so that when they dried and it looked and I really liked the way it looked I knew that that coaster I used those colors right so try and write them down if you can because it really is helpful to know what you've been using or what worked or what didn't work, okay? Because there's a tile I'll show you after that looked gorgeous when it was wet. It did not dry so gorgeous, at least in my opinion. All right, so I'm not gonna use the square tiles. I'm just gonna do four round tiles for you guys today. And I haven't shaken any of these paints, but I will tell you this, I did find that using the deco art, so like any type of deco art, was really good with cells, helping with the cells as well. 
So I'm going to just pick some random colors really quick and let me tell you, your bottles will get very, very dirty, okay? You need gloves, you're always touching, you're always tilting, this, that. Your gloves are gonna get super dirty, which means your bottles are gonna get super dirty, which then means you gotta clean them all off. If you're like me, they've gotta be clean. So I, sent and sp I spent like 15 minutes cleaning all my bottles yesterday. The other thing you're gonna need, which I'm not prepared for, is a Lazy Susan. So this one is Wilton, and it's actually, I used it when I was doing cakes way back in the day. And so I'm going to move this here so you're still in view, and I will put this here so you're in view. All right, so you need a Lazy Susan. You can get one off Amazon. You know, I'm sure you can get it at, you know, Michael's. This is where I got this from. And then to make sure you keep things nice and clean, I put saran wrap on it because you see how clean it is? It's not gonna be that clean when I'm done, believe me. So I just take some saran wrap, plastic wrap, call it whatever you want wrap, and I just put it on top. And then when I'm done, I just peel the saran wrap off, throw it in the garbage, and my spinner, Lazy Susan, is clean as a whistle, all right? So, that's it, ready to go, okay? Now, let's try bloom, shall we? I'm gonna put my gloves on, because trust me, the first time I did it, I'm like, yeah, I'll just wash my hands after. No, this base paint, the billow paint from Glidden, that stuff is hard to take off, let me tell you. So, do yourself a favor, do your hands a favor, and wear gloves, all right? So let's do a Crimson, Quinacridone Crimson by Holbein. Let's throw in, oh, I don't know, uh, Iridescent Blue Green by Pebeo. Let's throw in 24 karat gold, and let's do a purple to top it off, um, Windsor Violet. Okay, like I'm just picking random colors here just for the sake of doing this video super quick. All right, so what you wanna do now, okay, is I'm going to put some of my pillow paint down. This is the Glidden. And I'm just going to, you don't need to load up the paint, okay? Contrary to what I said in video 131, you know, you put a big mound in the middle. No, nope, I don't do that anymore. I literally just enough to cover the bottom of the tile or the top of the tile. And then I just use my finger just like so, oh, sorry. <laughs> just like so to get the edges covered. Now they're gonna get covered once you spin anyway. And I do recommend spinning because if you try and tilt, believe me, it's, it's, it, you're gonna distort your cells and everything. You really, really want to spin, okay? Let me get some paper towel. See, I'm not prepared. All right, but I know you guys forgive me. All right, some paper towel right there. Okay, so, see, I'm already dirty. Now I'm gonna touch my bottles, ah! But that's okay. Little rubbing alcohol, paper towel, clean them right up. So what you wanna do, you can see, right? Yep, good. So I use my Dutch pour paint and just put a few blobs. Now, sometimes you'll get air bubbles. I can already see an air bubble there. And I was actually torching the air bubbles and I found it was kind of messing with the paint when I torched it. So I stopped doing that. The air bubbles will go away, trust me. All right, so now I've got my cell activator and you're just gonna put a little dab in the center. Now I'm gonna blow this out. I hope you can see with my big head in the way. And oh my goodness, look at that, okay? So you wanna give it a second or two, or not. I Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. And then I'm going to throw it on my Lazy Susan. And look, it's already got a circle in there, so I know where the center is. All right. And then you're going to give it a spinner. Little spins. 
nothing crazy. Now you've already seen it's gone over the edge. So now I'm going to spin this way, spin it the other way. And now the whole tile is covered. Then I'm so unprepared. Then I get a knife or something sharp just to lift it up off the bottom. Cause you don't want to touch the sides cause they're all so pretty. And there you have it, my friends. <laughs> Dutch pour paint. Who would have thought Dutch pour paint? Okay. So I'm going to put this and now this was the um, satin. So I'm going to put it here and I'll show you guys after when I'm done on my satin side. So I know which tiles were satin and which ones are eggshell because it you know helps you determine what works and what doesn't. All right, next tile. Let's change up the colors. I think I'm going to do some green. Let's do some green. I'm going to take out the gold. Let's add some pearl violet in there. Let's do some dioxazine violet. Let's throw in, oh, I don't know. Let's see, let's see. Their color combinations are ridiculously endless. Like, I mean, you could do so many different things. I'm gonna add pearl blue. So I'm gonna add five colors in this one. I'm gonna top it off with metallic cobalt blue. All right, so I'm gonna give these a shake real quick because I didn't shake any of these prior to my recording, all right? So there you go. And again, I would typically be writing these down, but I don't need to because it's on video. All right, so now I'm going to use the eggshell base. And again, <clears throat> just going to drizzle on the tile. You don't need much. So that is the good thing. All right. Use your glove, your finger. And so these, that, this is what I love about these tiles. You don't need to prep them or prime them. If you are using MDF, you will definitely, absolutely, definitely need to prime them um, because it'll just seep, it'll suck it right up. The MDF will suck up the paint. All right, so there we go. That's done. Clean off my fingers and let's start with these colors. So we've got green. All right, then we have the pearl violet. And if it doesn't work out, then you just scrape it and try again. Cause sometimes certain colors will definitely give you better cells. Uh, you know, it's it all depends on what that brand, how they make their paints, right? There you go. Now I'm gonna put my cell activator on top, just like so, and I'm gonna blow it out. So there you go. And you can see it's pooling back into the center, right? So look at that. I'm gonna put it here and give her a spin. Okay, now I'm gonna go the other way. And we're done. So <laughs> it's a lot of fun, especially because there's so many different color combinations that you can do. Like the possibilities are just endless. All right, so I'm gonna now put this one here. Uh, two more to go. Let's see, what shall we do next? Too bad you guys can't yell at me and be like, do this color, do that color. All right, and then, I'll put this here. All right, what shall we try? I do have, um, I've got Pearl by Deco Art, so let's try that. And let's use Cypress Green Pearl. Mm, ooh, I've got Naples Yellow Red. I wonder, yeah, I don't know how that's gonna look. Maybe the Cypress Green isn't good. Let's do, <laughs> let's do Quinacridone Magenta. That looks pretty. And um, actually let's add gold. Cause I think gold, you see, there's just, you look at it and you're like, mm, what should I do? Uh, let's add purple. Let's add purple. Let's see. Um, I just used Dioxazine Violet. No, no, that won't work. 
All right, we can do this. All right, let's do that. These are just, I'm just messing around with colors. So, whoops. Just so you guys kind of get the idea, but you guys can practice and try so many different color combinations. You would be surprised. And like, if you do a color combination and you really like it, use the same color combination, but just change the order of how you put the paints down. Cause that really changes things up as well. It really makes a difference how you layer your paints and what order you put them in. Because when you change it, it changes the whole outcome when you're blowing it out. All right, so let's do, let's go this way, I guess. So we'll go that way. And I'm wondering if I should put gold in instead of that pearl. Yeah, or maybe, maybe bronze. All right, let's try bronze, whatever. And if you don't like it, just, oh, there was a lot of water in there. Ah, that's no good. Look at this. Look, look. Can you see that? Look at all the water. That might not work. It might not. It really might not. Um, so if it's not, I'm just going to scrape it and try again. Oh, boy. There was a lot of water in there. I didn't shake it properly. All right, cell activator. All right, let's blow it out. All right, there we go. That's what we've got here. All right, put her down and spin her out. And that's it. Couple of spins. Now my goal is to try this on my bigger rounds and see how that works out because that's going to be a lot of fun. But I don't have any taped right now, so I can't uh, I can't do any on that. But maybe in a future video. Okay, last tile, my friends. All right, now we're going to use the uh, what is this? The eggshell? Yep, eggshell. All right, so I hope this is helpful. For those of you who do your Dutch pours and follow my recipe, you've already got your paints ready to go. You've already got half the stuff ready. And doing the cell activator is super easy, three to one ratio with your flow trawl. All right, so all you need is your pillow paint. You know, you can experiment with different pillow paints. You can try using Artist Loft. I haven't uh, had the chance to experiment with that yet, but I really like the way this base is working for me. So, and it's super easy to get. It's not super expensive, so I'm going to stick with it. All right, let's do one last color shebang. Let's use Windsor Violet, uh, Windsor Blue by Windsor and Newton. Let's use Turquoise Green by Amsterdam. Let's use uh, Pearl Blue. Let's use Pearl Violet. And let's do, oh, I don't know. Let's try Luminous Violet. That looks pretty. All right, so just gotta give these closed ones a good shake. All right. All right, yeah, all right, let's go. Last one. All right, and you can see there's air bubbles. Oops, guess I need to open the lid there. Air bubbles in there, but those go away when you spin it. All right. Oh, it's so pretty. My favorite. Look at that. I love it. All right. So the other thing is when your, your spinner gets a lot of paint on it, you might want to scrape it off because it will splatter all over you as you're spinning. All right. Oh, that is so pretty. Ah, splatter. Okay, let's go this way. Oh, I love it. That is 
is so pretty. All right. I'm just going to tilt it ever so slightly over here just to get this. Or you can always just use your finger just like that. <gasps> Look at that. I love it. Now, it's not perfect. It's no Shelly Bloom. You know, she has mastered this stuff, you know, and there's other people out there who have mastered this as well. Um, you know, Erica Hughes Art does amazing blooms. Tammy Anderson, stunning blooms. Um, so they've been doing this for a long time. I haven't, um, but for considering I just started doing this again after a year and a half, I'd say it's not so bad. Um, but as I mentioned, it's easy recipe, easy ingredients, you know, just so much easier than what used to be. Um, so give it a whirl. So now I'm done and I'm just going to, ta-da! You see that? Cover your stuff, people, let me tell you. Okay, I am going to take this off. I'm gonna put you guys on pause and I'm gonna show you guys the coasters I did yesterday and show you anything else I need to show you um, for this video, which I don't think is much, but give me a sec and I'll be right back. All right, everybody. So these are the bottles I used and you can see now they are dirty. Now they will get a lot dirtier as you keep you know, practicing this technique. So then what I do is I just take some isopropyl alcohol, put it on some paper towel and I rub all my bottles clean because these are my Dutch pour bottles. Um, you know, if they were strictly for bloom technique, I really wouldn't care if they were dirty, but because I use these for my Dutch pour videos, I like to be neat and tidy. <laughs> so here we have the tiles we just did, or I just did. Try not to get the glare on here. So it'll be interesting to see how they do dry, but I'm really, really happy with the results considering, you know, before just didn't really work that well. So these are some results from yesterday. Now you can see I wrote satin, sorry, don't mind. Oh, bright light, satin and eggshell. So these are all my satin coasters and these were all my eggshell coasters. Let me just turn that away. Okay, so we have this and it dried perfectly. So wait till this gets resin on it. It's gonna be stunning. And then here's the green with the iridescent green yellow by Pebeo. And then, let's see, I've got another one here. So once these get crystal resin, they will pop like crazy. Look, I did copper, gold, and bronze, I think, in this one. And then this one, here's one of the ones I told you didn't work out. So I'm not quite sure what happened around the edge here. It's very bizarre, but stuff happens. What are you gonna do? So it is a little strange. So it really just depends on the color you're using and all of that. So then we've got this one. So these are all satin. Then you move on to the eggshell and then you've got some purple and gold in this. Like I said, these aren't perfect. I'm not a Shelly expert. You know, if you want expert stuff, check out Shelly. Shelly Carruthers with her beautiful bloom videos and, you know, Instagram posts and all that. And, you know, if you do still want to take the course, you can and you can still get a discount. I will provide that info in the description below. For some people, taking the course really is beneficial because you also do get access to the private Facebook group with uh, has thousands upon thousands of members who are extremely helpful and so supportive. So sometimes just that Facebook group in itself is worth it. So if you still are interested in taking the course, you can do so and get a discount. And I'll put that in the information below. So then there's this one too. And again, this one kind of got a little weird along the edges too. So I don't know, but it's still pretty. So there you have it. Let's see, what else do I have to show you here in the dark? So, sorry, it's dark here. So these are some other coasters I did. And you can see the back, how messy they are. So I gotta tape those and do, no, sorry, I already did tape them and put a top coat of crystal resin. So now they just need a backing, but they're perfect. So look at that. Sorry, I have, don't have my light on. should have my lights on. 
All right. So I've decided to sell the tester pieces. A lot of people have been asking about the tester pieces and if I'm gonna sell them. So I have decided to go ahead and sell them. So if you are interested in random uh, set of four coasters, these still need resin. All these need resin still. You can email me at canelaseraco at gmail.com. So these are my testers um, that I did with the original recipe stuff and you can see like this one here it's already got a shimmer to it and i don't even have resin on it yet so some of these will look pretty pretty gorgeous with um crystal resin on them so that's what i have so far and you know those here and then these here that i just did today so if anyone is interested in any you can email me and that is it guys i'm going to spend some time cleaning up this mess putting everything away. Um, if you have any questions, please put them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer everybody. I hope this video was helpful. I will do more along the way, but I thought I'd get this one done and out so that you guys can start practicing and, you know, start trying your own stuff. And again, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, that's it. So thank you so much for watching. Until next time, have a good day. Have a good night and I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye.